What's up, everybody? John here from ContraBim, and it's great to be back here on YouTube after taking a few months off to enjoy my new status of being a father. Uh, but I'm excited to be back with you. Um, I have a ton of new videos coming out on Archicad 25 new features, as well as the new ContraBim templates that I've been working uh, just crazy on these last several months. Uh, but today I wanted to share one of the biggest game-changing workflows that I've developed, which has really helped me so much in the way of how I'm working in Archicad. It's really been uh, transformational, I would say, uh, both for me and the users on ContraBIM, and I hope it can be transformational for you as well. So what am I talking about here? Well, it's all about how to manage your model content within Archicad. And I've developed this new ContraBIM method for organizing content within our files so that it's right there at your fingertips, easy to access, but it doesn't clutter up any of your drawing views or your interactive schedules. So when I'm talking about model content, what I'm really talking about is the visual elements that are actually placed into our project so that we can work on them, dial in the settings, dial in the data, and so that we want, when we want to go use them on our uh, future projects um, or the current project we're working on, they're right there and it's easy to access. And we don't have to go into the favorites and then adjust favorites settings. So, um, so yeah, if you're looking for a way to organize the model content that you work with on all of your projects, then I really hope in this video we can uh, get you uh, kind of set up on a path to success from here into the future. So, all right, so that's the, con the subject for today. It's all about model content planning. And uh, let's go ahead and dive into a quick example here, and I'll show you the new ContraBIM method for managing content uh, within Archicad. So, all right, I just want to start out here with a kind of a uh, overall view of uh, the project area and in this case you can actually see that we have just kind of like a you know some very simple lines we have some some default views that are ready to be kind of placed and moved around within the project if we turn on our uh, layout as a trace you can see that obviously we have a, a, a master layout as a reference here so we can kind of see how these drawing views are being placed onto uh, the paper space or the layouts. Um, but beyond that, there's so much opportunity outside of this. It's just kind of like an empty void that continues on forever. So what I love about this is there's just so much opportunity to build other workflows kind of adjacent and parallel to our project um, that will help us actually build our project faster. So uh, to demonstrate how this works, let's uh, I'm just going to click on another view here and just show you the new model content plan. So we're going to zoom out here a little bit and you'll see down at the bottom here, you'll see that we're going to start populating with with several model elements. Well, how did we turn this on and how are we making this available? Uh, this goes back to actually the last video that I posted, which was about the renovation tool. And we're actually pinning all of this content down below, which I'm calling the model content plan, to a renovation status. So if we zoom in here, um, we can go anywhere. Let's go look at some trees here. Um, and we select one. You can see that this element here is actually pinned to our model content for our design elements in this particular case. So whenever we switch off this view or off the status to even like a show all, that's gonna disappear. So we can bring it right back by just changing our renovation status. And this I've found is the best way to have model content that's not necessarily part of our project, but content that's in our project file that's available to pick up the, pr the parameters with and go run with. So for example, if we wanna add some flexible asphalt paving to our project, we can pick up those settings there with the eyedropper tool, then we can come over here and model, and then when we're working on a new project plan, like if we go to our plan status, you can see that all that content down below will disappear and we're left over with just the elements that we picked up the settings on and ran with. So that's because we did not have it pinned here to that specific renovation status. So it's easy to set this up. You can have multiple uh, renovation statuses where you can pin content to and use this kind of as just like a way to store uh, models, model elements 
in a way that will not necessarily interact with your uh, your drawing views or with your um, interactive schedules. So that's really important um, because some of the methods that we have you know tried and used in the past for managing this content kind of you know to the side of our project, uh, it's been a little bit more of a pain to exclude that content from your drawing views. So um, what's great about this is um, when we actually are working with interactive schedules, um, it's, it's all saved in the view settings. So like if we go to any of our view settings here, let's just pull up like the systems reports just as a sample here. We can see that in our systems report, our we're set to our plan status down here at the bottom. So when we open this up, um, we're not gonna get anything on this particular uh, view until we go in and we can change our scheme settings. Sorry, not our scheme settings. We don't even need to touch our scheme settings. Before, when we wanted to exclude content from our interactive schedules, we were actually setting up a criteria here to exclude either like a hot link module or uh, another method for storing content in a project file um, would be to place it on like a sunken layer or sorry, a sunken story like down below. Um, and so we would have to exclude either that story or exclude that hot link module. Now we don't have to worry about that at all because we can control all of this within our view settings. So, and we can have multiple views of the same interactive schedules. Um, one set up, say to list all of our model content plan as we'll show right here. I'm just gonna switch this over to model content elements. We switch this over and we'll be able to see all that content from our model content plan flowing right into this report so that we can dial in the settings even more and make sure that this is set up fully functional with our outputs. In this case, it would be the systems report Excel output. So here you can see all this content just uh, was loaded right back in. And if I jump over here to my kind of working view here where I have this content pulled up, we can go in here, we can just eyedropper an element and we can start modeling and um, we can switch this back with our view settings. And what's great about this is we can just grab all these at once and we can change all these view settings. It's gonna show us various because we did change the one, but we'll just set this to plan status and we'll go back to that report. And now we are removing all of our model content and we're just listing that one element that we have actually added to our project. Okay, well that didn't work. Let's see what happened there. View settings, plan status, there we go. So it just needed to, to refresh there for us. So um, so yeah, that is kind of the, uh, the basics behind this workflow. Um, it is really easy to, uh, to work with. I've found it's way, way easier than using a hot link module from a separate file in the previous templates that i've put out i always had like a virtual library file that was um, a separate pln file from our archicad template file and that's where we would store all of these model elements and we would uh, kind of work on them there we'd set up all the reporting we get all the data right and then we would set up a hot link connection so that we can bring that content into our working file, um, which just created a bunch of little headaches and a bunch of steps when going to update the library content and then being having to refresh that into our uh, working project file. So there were some limitations with that also for the solo Archicad users um, because the solo license or the solo version of Archicad uh, doesn't work with hot link modules. So that was a big limitation that we wanted to get rid of. So now all we need to do here is um, whenever we want to create new content, it's just simply we, we create it and we pin it to a renovation filter and it's really as simple as that. We're doing this here not just for the model elements but for the content, the boxes, the you know the areas that we want to hide along with that. Um, we just pin all that content there and we can get that to um, easily just hide. So the one thing that we can't get to hide um, is actually views of our model content which kind of, you know, this is a, a huge 
opportunity and a kind of a huge subject that I just want to touch on here is the fact that when we have our model elements placed off to the side of our project like this and we're continually working on them and dialing in these settings to really fit your office standards, how you want to set them up. This provides so much opportunity for really dialing in the details as well. So uh, with all these walls here that we've placed, there's actually a section that we are cutting through all of them here. And if we go to like our details now under design, we go to our wall section here, we can see that um, we have all these walls that are cut. We can create details. We can create different versions of these details for you know just our general uh, you know wall sections. We can do window details and door details, and we can build all of this from our model content plan. And it's just a way to use those elements, use those views that we can set up as a way to really like pre-plan out the details of the project. So um, this is just a starting point here. There's, I'm so excited about the direction that this is going. And um, yeah, it just makes it easy to set up these different views where you can have all your different slabs and ceiling elements and roofs. And you can just go through and um, set these up so that you can really dial in the details here and you know build out those different assemblies that you want to work with. So, all right, a few more just quick things I wanna point out here. Um, so I just kinda of wanna do a quick fly through here of some of these new sections that I've been working on. So um, yeah, we've kinda of rearranged our library from last year into a format here that's a little bit easier to work with. Um, so you can see kind of the level of detail on some of these different assemblies for, um, you know, site utilities. Um, we've kind of rebuilt a lot of the, uh, well, we've rebuilt so much in the new version of the template, but um, we've set this up now where it's really easy just to go grab different equipment or different furnishings. Um, we've laid out our uh, like plumbing fixtures and uh, piping systems and HVAC systems in a way that's much easier to go and grab. Um, we have new electrical uh, elements that are set up here. We can switch our scale here to kind of boost these a little bit. Um, so we've kind of revamped all of this as well. And uh, once again, this is so much easier to work with now that it's actually built into the project template um, where at any point in time if we want to go in and start making adjustments to this changing the size of the symbols or the size of the text we can just do that right here and then it's there and available to grab and work with on the next project so yeah this is just kind of the you know an introductory subject to how i'm using this new contrabim method of storing uh let's call it just like you know, parallel model content to our project. Um, so yeah, this is yeah the new method that I'm working with. And there's a lot of ways of using the same workflow beyond storing model content in here as well. And just to give you a quick taste of what I'm talking about here, um, with the new template, I've built in a training guide directly into the project file as well, where it really just kind of goes through and follows along the steps of getting set up. And what's great about this is, you know, it's off to the side of the project. All of this content is again pinned to a training guide renovation filter. And so what's great is these are just really simple 2D objects that we can now list into interactive schedules here. So let's just go to the first one here for our learn section. And with these elements being listed, we can just have kind of a checklist of going through and getting things set up. So, or, you know, to, you know, go through the steps of setting things up, or you can go and access training videos really at any point in time, just by going through and clicking on the links here. So really excited about this because this is building the training program directly into the Archicad file so that it's easier to access and at any point you can go and watch a video on this and um, learn all about the subject and this is just the beginning of this so i'm excited um yeah with all the new contrabim templates coming out they are all going to have this training program built in um and that's just one example of how to use this there's 
other checklists and quality control measures we can build in through the same format that will give you a guide to work through as you're building your project to make sure you're checking off all the items. So, okay, I think that is it for today. Um, it feels great to be back doing YouTube videos again after a few months off. And um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions on this. I hope you can use a workflow like this um, as well in your own, um, you know, Archicad projects and workflows. It's just, uh, to me, it just makes a lot of sense. It's way more user-friendly and easy to use um, than having everything placed on one sunken story because, you know, as you'll note here, um, as we go up through the stories, um, we're not limited to one story here. We can go to an attic story, we can go to a roof story, and we can have this content placed across multiple stories, and we can really dial in the settings so that the elements show up on their home story as well as the adjacent stories as well. So that's really important when it comes to setting things up. You don't have to have all your roofs placed on like a sunken story and then go and reset those settings to get them on the correct story later on. Uh, this makes it much easier to kind of, uh, uh, you know, cut that step out. Um, so just want to point that out. And um, yeah, this is way easier than having to deal with hot links and updating hot links um, and having two files to manage when it comes to your project attributes. Um, having it all in one just makes a lot of sense and uh, is much easier to use. And it may add a little bit to the file size, but I think the benefits of having this and the ability to start detailing from your model content plan uh, and having these details flow right into your project drawings um, is really a powerful concept. And so I'm excited to share it with you today. You can probably feel that excitement. And um, yeah, hopefully this is something that you can use. So that's it for today. I'll actually sign off this time. Um, if you want to learn more about the new ContraBIM templates, then go check out ContraBIM.com where we have more trainings and um, different tools to help you do more with Archicad. And uh, if you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe and like the videos. And uh, we'll catch you on another one here very soon. Thanks for watching.